Well, I first heard about this little boy who was sacrificed on the top of this mountain in Chile when I was in high school. And on Sunday afternoons, my father used to take us to the National Museum of Natural History in Santiago. The first time I went there, we were walking through it, and we came to a refrigerated showcase that had this little boy in it. He's not a mummy. He's a flesh and blood child. He looks almost like he's sleeping. My book is called The Summits and Sacrifice, and it deals with two important practices in the Inca Empire, which were human sacrifice and mountain worship. These sacrifices were part of the ideology of the Incas and the Andes. Capac Ucha sacrifice involved the sacrifice of children and young women primarily. In the myth history of the Andes, when the creator god created all the different ethnic groups, he sent them along subterranean passageways to appear at different points on the Earth's surface. And some groups believe that they sprung out of mountains, other groups believe that they came out of little lakes. These different points where they appeared on the Earth's surface were called their pacarinas, their points of origin. And groups worship these. So part of the genius of the Incas was to gain power over these people by conquering them and then by co-opting the worship of these pacarinas, of these wakas. At the same time, they forbade the local people from making sacrifices. The children who were chosen for sacrifice would have been the, the kids of curacas, which were regional nobles. So the Incas never sacrificed their own children. And this is sort of the ultimate statement of political power. The Spanish recorded thousands of documents on the Incas. Part of the reason was so they could better administer their, their colonial empire so that they could basically wipe out what they considered um, the idolatrous practices of the Incas. I take all the ethno-historic documents I can find from the 16th century up until the 18th century that describe human sacrifice and mountain worship and I bring all the data together and then I search it for certain patterns. When you're dealing with ethno-historic documents you have to be very careful because every author had his own biases. And part of your job as an ethno-historian is to look at the documents and assess what those biases were. So what is important to me as a researcher is how different groups, including the Incas, manipulated the ideology to their own ends, to gain political power over defeated peoples.